All right, guys. Today's the day. We're here. RJ Boyle Studios. Variable sp speed reel is on the rod. They're not going to need the rod, but uh, we're bringing that inside. I'm going to see Nick, store manager, and uh, he's going to uh, get this bad boy outfitted with some 80 pound braid, and we'll take you through the process of how they spool that up, some uh, technical machinery they have inside to make sure that the job is really done properly on this heavy duty equipment. And uh, let's get inside and get it done. What's up, Jamie? What's up? What's up? What so, we got there? Here she is. This is uh, the new variable speed that I was telling you that uh, saves some shekels for and <laughs> getting ready to outfit this thing. And uh, I think everybody knows who Bobby Boyle is, right? I would say so by now. His, his sidekick <laughs> back there, John Bassett, who a lot of people, unless they're my age, don't know, but certainly one of the best fishermen in South Florida. Phenomenal sword fisherman himself. So I'm going to turn this bad boy over to you. And we'll get you where, spooled up. Where are we going from here? Right back to our tensioning machine. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so we're inside the back side of the store. This is where the rod building goes down. This is where they fill the reels. Obviously, we got this bad boy sitting in the rocket launcher. So what's the setup here? How's this going to happen, Nick? And what's the next step? OK, so when a customer brings the reel in to get spooled, first thing we do, whether it's on a butt or not, we'll mount it up onto a butt so that we can put it in our rocket launcher, which is in front of our tensioning machine. Depending on how much line or what you're doing, we'll either back the reel with Dacron. Yeah, that was, um, I was thinking as, about that before I came in, like, you, you know, obviously braided line is, comes with a cost. Comes with uh, a cost. Um, you certainly want to make sure you have plenty of it when you need it, but like, what size braid are we going with? We're gonna go with 80 pound. Okay. That's the most universal. Okay, do you recommend any particular brand or? We have our own brand. Okay. Um, there's other brands on the market like J Braid and Suffix. Daiwa has uh -huh. uh, their own stuff now. And uh, we've been using our braid for about three years now. Okay. It's Teflon coated. Okay. Uh, eight strand, eight carrier. Mm -hmm. um, you said 80 pound? 80 pound. Okay. Is that pretty much the standard for most guys that are doing this? 80 on? pound allows you to do the most with it. Okay. 60, some guys still use 65 for sword fishing on a real thick current day. You do see a little bit of difference in mm -hmm. your scope, but not a huge difference. Yeah. And so for like, as I mentioned to you coming in, a lot of, a lot of guys that are be watching this video are, are, are very much novice. Yeah, and and I've, I've been told that for the average fisherman, is it true like 65 is a little more technical and fishing 65 versus 80? 65 breaks a little bit. Yeah. 80 pounds like rope. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. So I like rope. Right. <laughs> if you if you want something that's a little more reliable, you stick with the 80 pound. There's one of your inside uh, tips in the, the video here today. Oh, yeah. So the 80 pounds. So we're going to do 3,000 yards of 80 pound on here. Okay. Just so if you would ever be out sword fishing and you would hang bottom, which no one hopes for that, but it happens occasionally. You can just throw another wind on leader on there mm -hmm. and you're still dropping for the rest of the day. Right, right. Some guys do two spools of 1500. Mm -hmm. So we'll back it with a Dacron, splice in 1500 yards of 80 pound, mm -hmm. put your wind on on, and then they have a, a spare spool with the LPs. You have your quick change knob to where you can just pop the spool off, mm -hmm. pop a new one on so you don't have to try to do your bimini and your cat's paw with your wind on while out sword fishing. Okay, um, I like it. Today we're gonna do 3,000 yards, get a wind on on there, put the proper amount of tension. So that's, so 3,000 straight 80, no backing. There on. will, we're gonna, there, put, a, there will we're be gonna some put 150 yards. 150 yards of Dacron. Of a 100 okay. pound Dacron. Okay. Just because fuller the spool, right. more speed you have. Correct, and we're your retrieve in, ratio is correct. quicker, right? We want to get up and down from that bottom as so, fast as we can. So if you don't know what that means, obviously, and when he talks about speed, obviously the lower your diameter um, gets into the spool, the slower your retrieve rate is going to be, right? Because can't it's, capture as much line. You're not capturing as much line on every turn of the reel, but the fuller that spool is with line, the more line is coming in with every turn of the reel, your retrieve ratio is faster. So what does this tension machine do? So this tension machine puts pressure onto the spool, which is allowing you to put enough tension on your line when it's going onto your reel to where if you go to set the hook on a fish, the line doesn't dig into itself. 
right. major and, issue. And with braid, obviously, it's highly but, abrasive, right? Uh, extremely. So we you got to be careful with that. We look at two things. When you're going to spool the line, it has to be on the spool tight, or else the tension will dig the line into itself, mm -hmm. and it's actually weakening your line. Hmm. It's burning your line. Right. Braid is not good to heat. It weakens it. Mm -hmm. So if you have your line getting dug in, occasionally you'll get a poorly spooled spool line, mm -hmm. start spooling it, the tension will dig into itself and snap it off. Mm -hmm. So when buying a spool of braid, always make sure your braid is on there tight. Don't be afraid to grab onto that spool if you're gonna be bringing this home. I've or seen some that are like softer, squishy. so you wanna stay away from, that's bad stay news, Stay far right? away. Right, okay. That braid is just gonna get weaker and weaker as you spool it on, because it's, it's causing a lot of friction. Gotcha. And tension mm -hmm. is not good. Okay. So, if you're tying braid straight to the spool, we always suggest putting a little bit of electrical tape backing, just so it has a little bit more um, to attach it to, so it doesn't slip. The grip, okay. Any, any electrical tape will work. We just simply... Just double it up a little bit. A lot easier when you have power behind the reel. Oh yeah. <laughs> we go around the spool twice. And let me just do a four turn union knot. slowly cinch it down. With the electrical tape on there, you have to kind of cinch it down manually because it will not slip on it. Yeah, it's nice a, and tight. I would have never thought about the electrical tape. That's a, that's a good Just that extra, extra step. Tip. You got a lot invested in a, into a drop. That's right. You want everything to be done to where it's foolproof. Uh, explain to them what this gadget is that I'm, you're about to insert that through. So this is your level one. You always want to make sure your braid or your Dacron wire is always in between the two stand, um, standing bars and not between the frame and one of the bars. So if, if you're in between, once a year a guy will come to me and say, hey Nick, the spool of braid you just sold me <laughs> keeps popping, dude. What did you do to me? Bring the reel in. Operator They, they bring it in. It looks like someone took a a file and just grooved up the whole side of it. Mm -hmm. and I'll say, hey, Steve, whatever your name is, this is your issue. Oh, my freaking buddy was drinking a beer when he was putting a line through the guide. Mm -hmm. So always make sure it's between the two bars and you will never have an issue. If you're changing your spool and the line isn't perfectly straight with it, there's a drop pin on the bottom right here. Mm -hmm. If you would go to change this spool and your line was over here on the opposing side, all you would need to do is to pull this pin down, slide your level wind over, and then wiggle it back into the worm gear. You'll hear it lock in so that your line is always coming off the spool properly and there's no awkward tension of the line being on one side or the other. If you get a screaming bite, possibly with lighter line, you can break the line because mm -hmm. of that, because that hard angle, angle. Gotcha. or you're going to you're gonna hurt your level wind, which is so the, not common, the, but it does happen. The takeaway happen. is you want to make sure the level wind You is want everything to flow off right. real smoothly. Correct. Right. And then you just line it back up a little bit over. So we're going to start spooling this reel, 150 yards of 100 pound Dacron backing, mm -hmm. and we're going to put your 3,000 yards on top. Okay. 3,000 yards won't fill the reel completely. Mm -hmm. That's why we're putting the backing. Leaving. So that right. you have, one, you'll have enough room for your wind, wind on later. Right. But two, your spool will be extremely full to where you're always gaining the maximum amount of line you can. Perfect. When spooling the reel from the first time, there's an override, so you don't have to hold both the buttons. Mm -hmm. If you hold the farther, the farther side of the red, the one that's closer to your 
speed dial mm -hmm. and the black at the same time for 10 seconds, it will go into override mode. So you don't have to hold the buttons the whole time. Mm. Nice. With our tensioning machine, as the spool gets smaller, the tension will, will rise. So we always start at about 250 pounds of pressure. That's what I was asking what that gauge was telling us. And 250 to 300 pounds of pressure is about 25 to 30 pounds of tension onto the spool. Okay. So if you were pulling drags off your reels before a trip, It'd be 30 the equivalent pounds, of 30 pounds of drag? Correct. Okay. And, that, and, and for those of you guys that don't know, 30 pounds of drag is a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, to, to put True. it in perspective, like in the, like our fishing, our summer fishing tournaments, majority of the teams are probably fishing five pounds of drag, you know? So times that by six, and you're making sure there's plenty of pressure on there to make sure that that line is, is being packed onto the reel uh, nice and tight. Once you have your backing, what we'll do is we'll put a double line, a bimby twist in your braid. Mm -hmm. so when we do our double uni, mm -hmm. um, the, the knots are smooth. Gotcha. You don't want one side bigger than so the other. So is it a bimini on both sides? Uh, we're just gonna do a bimini on the braid side, uh -huh. and then we're gonna do a uni to uni knot. Okay, gotcha. 3,000 yards, and we'll go through the bimini with you guys if you'd like. Okay. Okay, so once you do your 44 turns, cinch it up, roll it down. We're gonna do a half hitch over one of the legs. So just the one side, not both just sides? Just one side, okay. and then we're gonna do both. Okay. And the key is the finish knot. I'm sure you're familiar with the mm -hmm. finish knot. What's, what do they call that finishing? Is there a particular name for it or just? We always just call it a finish knot, okay. to be honest. All it is essentially, it's a half hitch that you're gonna wrap the line around. How many times do you wrap We do this? six. That's about what I do, okay. With, with braid, we double everything. Mono, we usually do three. All right. Take your tag end, put it up against your bimini, mm -hmm. and then all you're gonna do is just back wrap it, yep. letting your turns line up right against each other mm -hmm. so that when you cinch it down, it's just a smooth pull. Nice and tight. And that will keep your line from ever unraveling those half pictures coming undone. I approve. Thank you. And then what we do after that is I just run my fingers through this to get the, the memory out from uh, doing your 44 turns. Okay. Get that line back to its normal straight character. I like that. And then we'll just do a uni to uni. With how thick the diameter of the Dacron is, mm -hmm. I do four. I cinch it down just a little bit. Get a little tension on it. Get a little bit of tension. Yep. And then we'll be doing the same with the braid size, but instead of four, we do six. And if you cinch your braid onto your Dacron too tightly, you will not be able to slide it. So we always get them both right next to each other and then really get them nice and tight. By the way, I would have told you the only thing that could have made this connection better is if it had been orange and blue because I happen to be a Florida Gator. The blue's too hard to see while you're sword fishing. Ah, perfect. You, you, you lose it in the sky. <laughs> so we're gonna reset our tensioner and we're gonna wind our 3,000 yards of braid on there. When spooling, we always get on the, on the side, the back side of the reel so that we can wash the line, level wind on there. Mm -hmm. 
if your reel's off to one side more than the other, you're gonna notice a buildup mm -hmm. on one of the sides of the spool. And you also wanna always make sure your line isn't coming off of the spool to where it's rubbing on one of the corners. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you'll find a spool that has real rough edges and, and you, you don't want on. anything to be right. hurting the integrity of your line. Yeah. So okay. always, okay. we're gonna spool it on, onto the reel now with about 30 pounds of pressure. Okay. And next time you have your drag scale out, pull 30 pounds and try yeah. to hold onto the rod yeah. at the same time. Exactly, good luck with that. <laughs> Override it, get it going. The screen will flash once once you override it. Get our tension going. And now the fun starts. About how long does it take to fill a reel like this with 3,000 yards? About 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. And the whole time we're always paying attention, making sure there's never an imperfection in the line, mm -hmm. discoloration, making sure it's meeting the sides of the spool properly, mm -hmm. and making sure the line's never touching the corners of the spool. Okay. Three thousand yards later. Three thousand yards later. Time for another bimini, and uh, we'll put the swordfish wind on, and you'll be fishing tomorrow. So, what are we? Uh, what's the standard uh, wind on? What are we using for leader? We're gonna use uh, it's 150 feet of 250 pound. Okay. It's one of the wind ons that we make here. Perfect. much easier to rig this stuff when you have the right when everything's in place the tools, right tool for the, the right, right job how often do you just come in here to rig your own stuff before you go fishing just because you got the area to do uh, every it? time <laughs> so whenever you take a fresh wind on out of the bag there's one little thing you should always do to make sure your dacron's fighting onto your mono take it out and run your fingers from the wax to the loop, pinching it nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Do that two or three times, and that's re-cinching the Dacron to make it bite better onto your mono. Okay. It's just like one of those Chinese finger locks you put your fingers in. Mm -hmm. the harder you pull on it, the tighter it goes. Gotcha. You need me to hold anything or? I'm good. Okay. You do them so many times by yourself that if someone tries to give you a hand, it usually confuses me. So you do a double cat's paw or what do you do? Uh, just standard cat's paw. Okay. We do eight, eight turns or eight go-throughs. Mm -hmm. And then we'll cinch the braid onto the Dacron at the end. I just learned something new because I know the cat's paws I've done in the past, I probably haven't done enough times. Yeah, so. you can get away with probably six, but at the end of the day, a couple extra is always going to be serving you better. Mm -hmm. So, there it is. Ready to rock. Now you said, did you say something about flossing? We already have the uh, the wax hanger on here okay. for your lead. Yep. And uh, when when you're going to put your wind on on, unwrap it like this. That helps get memory out of your line. Mm -hmm. Less memory, the better. 
So we just slowly unwrap it, one hand over the other, onto the floor, and we'll wind her on. What do you guys typically uh, recommend for the leader material that's gonna be actually attached the to bait. the bait? We suggest 300. 300? Yeah. That's it, huh? That's it. You're, have... you're officially ready to go daytime sword fishing. Just, I just have one final request. Hit me with it. Can you can you like attach a 400 pound sword to the other end of the line and just call it I can set you up forward? with someone that can maybe put, <laughs> put you in the right direction. Perfect. Well guys, uh, we are halfway there. So we've taken you behind the scenes at the Lingra Pittman factory to show you all of the incredible engineering that's gone, on, gone into developing, designing, manufacturing this amazing piece of equipment right here to inside one of their top, if not their top uh, dealers uh, here in um, South Florida and beyond, RJ Boyle Studio, Nick Noon, store manager. We showed you how to obviously get this reel set up with your backing, with your 80 pound braid, all the way to your 250 pound wind on. All we have left to do is go fishing, see if we can put a sword on the boat. I got Mr. Tam at LP himself that's gonna be joining us and who knows who the other cast of characters oh, will yeah. be. So Nick, Thank you, Thank Jamie. you, buddy, for everything. I'll probably be calling you guys for a little pre-daytime report. Until then, stay tuned. This is part one. Part two's coming up. We'll see you for the next Fish Blue Water video.